Right, here we are with um, my 2011 iMac. Uh, I've recently fitted a, an SSD to it. If you'd have followed my previous article on the on the um, on this iMac, you'll know that one of my frustrations was that I couldn't fit an SSD to it because every time I did, the fans got ramped up um, and the machine became too noisy to use. Well, that that was related to the way that Apple's done their their temperature readings. So after a while, I took a different uh, approach and what I've done is I've actually replaced the DVD drive now with a with an SSD much in the same way that I did on my MacBook Pro um, machines a lot better but uh, I thought we'd do a quick comparison now between this and the original video so firstly let's just have a look and see which iMac we're looking at there we go it's a 2011 3.4 gig i7 so that's the quad core there's 16 gig of RAM in it um, and let's have a look at some of the additional pieces in the system report. Okay, firstly, if we look at the drives under serial ATA, you'll see that I've got um, that one, which is the internal one terabyte drive. That's actually on a SATA 3 connection, but it, obviously the drive's only SATA 2, so it's only connection at 3 gig. The second um, connection is a, is a SATA 3. Uh, connection but I didn't have the right cable for that so what I've done is I've actually re replaced the DVD drive um, which is that one now unfortunately that's only a SATA 2 connection so my current SATA 3 SSD which is that one is currently only running at SATA 2 speeds so that's something to bear in mind okay so currently the drives that are in this there's the one terabyte internal and there's the 256 SSD which is in the OptiBay in, in replacement of the DVD drive okay um, you'll probably notice down here I've turned on trim support using the uh, the hack to enable trim for non Apple SSDs I've put a link on the blog as well if you want to have a look at that um, the other thing that's worth looking at for this is this machine's got 16 gig of RAM in it you'll see that there's four banks which makes it a lot cheaper to upgrade you can put in 4x4 four four chips rather than the uh, 2x8s that you need in the pros um, to give you an idea if I remember rightly 16 gig of RAM for this unit was about 120 pounds. Um, yeah, quite a bargain, I think. Okay. Um, of course, you got the Thunderbolt port. I don't have anything installed on those. The only thing I will add: there was recently a, a firmware update for the Thunderbolt port, and that seems to resolve my issues with the flashing external monitors. Um, for example, next next to this iMac, I've got a 24-inch cinema screen that's currently plugged into a Mac Mini. Um, previously, when I tried to extend the display of the iMac, the 24-inch screen would flash periodically, which was incredibly annoying. I don't seem to get that effect now since the firmware update. Now, I don't get it on the iMac or on my Thunderbolt-equipped MacBook Pro or um, Airs, which is good to see. Okay, um, well, that's roughly the hardware. Um, let's have a quick look at the performance stats. Let's fire up the system test, for example. Um, if we do a drive test, for example, on the original drive, which was that one, okay, we'll do a 512 meg test. You'll see the read and write speeds from the physical drive. They're not bad, but um, compared to my SSD equipped kit, it made it feel slow. So that they're the figures for the internal drive. So let's try it again on the new SSD that I've popped in. There you go, you can see it's more than double. Um, also, of course, there's the advantage of uh, seek times being virtually non-existent on the SSD. I'm, I'm totally sold on the technology. I, I, wherever possible, I would not switch back to a physical drive. Um, let's have a look at the Xbench stats as well. One thing I found with Xbench, by the way, on Lion, you can't run the thread test. So I'm just going to turn that off um, and let these stats run. Okay, um, the one we're interested in really, I mean, the, the, you've got the processor and everything testing up there. Um, this test is coming out very, very good. Uh, it's at 442, that's significantly higher um, than my previous SATA 2 SSD. So I still think the C300 is a good device. To give you an idea, if I rerun that disk test, um, let me kill that. I'll rerun the disk test, but on the, the old physical drive that was in there.
Okay, as you can see, the difference between the two is just, um, well, it's massive. It does make a massive difference to the, the feel of the machine. Um, being used to an SSD laptop, using the physical drive iMac just made this feel like sludge compared to my others. Um, so let's have a look at some of the general performance. Um, okay, well I can fire up some of the Office apps. There we go. You can see they're practically instantaneous, which is um, pretty much what you want. Let's get rid of those. Um, I've also got a couple of virtual machines running at the moment, so let's jump across and have a look at my normal work Windows environment. This is my um, work environment, so I'd, well, my normal desktop. So let's have a look at the performance index. This is virtualized within Parallels, by the way. I'll just show you the configuration. I have um, all f all core all four cores allocated to the machine, um, so it's showing eight there. And there's three gig of RAM allocated. Okay, if we look at the performance index, it's currently running a 5.9, with the slowest one being the memory, um, which is a bit of a surprise, really. The disk transfer rate is 7.8, so so that's a great score. Um, performance is also excellent in the machine. Bizarrely, it's actually faster than my normal Windows laptop that I get from work, but we won't mention that. There you go. Okay, so personally I think the SSD has revolutionised this machine for me. It's made it far more usable than it was previously. Um, but I guess that depends on what you're used to. Um, of course, I mean, my laptops have got SSDs on them, so obviously I found found them quite restrictive. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way I'll be going back to uh, using a physical drive. Anyway, hope you found that useful. The, the upgrade process was a little bit painful. Um, you know, you just need patience, really, and you need to be very careful with all the cables on the back of the screen uh, and just take care, really. Um, obviously, it does void your warranty. Uh, it's obvious when you've taken the machine apart. So, um, yeah, I, I guess it comes down to your attitude on that front. Anyway, I hope that helped.